This is a quick video on how to change a selenium rectifier to a silicon rectifier. This thing right here is a selenium rectifier and as everybody knows as these things age the internal resistance goes up so that they're they become inefficient and just get hot and the B plus goes down. First thing you want to do is get a schematic on it so you know what the B plus voltage is supposed to be and here it's supposed to be 130 volts B plus. This is Shango 066 from the Shango 066 channel and this is what our current voltage is measuring 96.9 remember it's supposed to be 130 and it will continue to drop as the rectifier heats up the internal resistance will increase now when you do what I'm gonna do you wanna make sure that everything is already done your capacitors are good you don't have any tubes missing you wanna make sure that you have the full load on the B plus which just means that this is almost the last thing you want to do now we need to add a series resistor because the new 1N4007 that I'm going to use to replace this a silicon diode is much more efficient so if we don't we'll, we'll, we'll demonstrate what happens here's our 1N4007 and I just have it temporarily tacked in here and with everything warmed up, our voltage is 140. So this is not too bad. Remember, our target's 130. Now, there's three ways to figure out the value. You can use a power resistor decade box, which is what I'm going to use. You can try and find, if you do a lot of radios, you can try and find one of these big 100, 100 watt, 100 ohm variable pots. This is just a pot. Or you can have a collection of these and start the substitution game. So what I'm simply going to do is I have the decade box in, inserted in series between the diode and the capacitor and I'm simply just going to dial in the value that I want. That should be 10 ohms, 20 ohms, 30 ohms, 40 ohms, 50 ohms, 60 ohms, 70 ohms, 80 ohms. If we wanted, we could get it dead on with this. So it wants to be 67 ohms, which is what it wants to be there. It actually kind of jumps around a little bit. That might be my line voltage. The other thing when you do this, you want to make sure you don't have any variax or transformers or isolation transformers. You want the thing set up like you're going to use it every day. So I would rather run it a little bit low. So I think I'm going to go, I could even go, let's see, what's 100 ohms do? I could even go with 100 ohms. But basically I want um, 80 to 90, between 70 and 90 ohms. It's not that critical. Every situation is going to be different. Don't assume that just because 70 ohms worked for me, it's going to work for you it's not okay um, depending on the current draw and the capacitor configuration every situation is going to be different that's how to uh, find your find your selenium rectifier a series resistor just a quick look at what we've done um, got a hundred ohm here I put a terminal strip in and here's our 1N4007. I've left the, the uh, selenium. It's disconnected. It's just being used as a terminal there. 
I have not replaced the electrolytic. I haven't heard back from the owner yet if he wants to do that. This one tests fine. There's extra, uh, there's enough extra pins on the terminal strip for the basically capacitor one from here to ground, capacitor two from here to ground through through the resistor and capacitor 3 from here to ground through the resistor. So we've got two 390s here. And uh, I actually picked up the 390s in case he wants to do it. I don't know if I'd recommend it. We're going to test it for a few days and see. I talked to the owner and this is pretty much a no expense spared repair. So as you can see what I've done is I've completely cut um, the capacitor out. It's totally isolated off on its own. I've moved the three wires that were attached up to it up here for the three B pluses. I got two new resistors, two new 390s, and um, we're going to recap it. I feel like I should have that stupid Nay Nay Baby song playing, you know, recapping the kind of this mindless activity of replacing capacitors after doing the IF transformers. Maybe I'll get that rolling here. Now that's music to replace capacitors to right there. So what I've done is it would have been too crowded over here and I could possibly be dealing with a clearance issue. So what I've done is I've moved it over over here which is just as good. Yeah, I think we can check the AM alignment and then call this a wrap. 455 See how far out these are. Does not like my tool here. Huh. Car test program. I'm Bloomberg's Elisa Parenti. That story's coming up in five minutes. This is Steve Grant. The Clippers are taking on a team that the Lakers crushed in state. It's not. It's working pretty good. It's not super hot, but I got the antenna um, tied down here so I won't break it. I think this is a wrap. I think this thing is good. Good to go. Holiday deals on our line of wireless all-in-one. I gotta say, the FM on this thing sounds really good, but the AM seems a little weak and it could be where the bar antenna is, but I, I forgot about that. That detector diode someone put in there that's basically like a um, rectifier. 
I was thinking about pulling that out real quick and trying some different diodes, just tacking them on the bottom and seeing if there, there's any performance difference. Here's a diode that was in in there as the AM detector, a 1N4007. I didn't know that was approved to run up to 455 kilohertz. Uh, diodes have capacitance and that uh, I don't think would be good. Let's try an experiment. I have a some 1N 60P. These are shot key versions of the 1N 60 germanium and here's some 1N 60 germaniums. So let's do a little test. I tried three different diodes in there. Silicon, 1N 60P and 1N 60 germanium. They all performed exactly the same as the 1N4007. I learned something new. I didn't know you could use a rectifier for a detector. I don't think it would work real well on the FM band, but I guess it'll work on the AM band.